Close your eyes and watch your breath. And if there are any other thoughts, you can let them go. This is a time to find something better than the normal things you're thinking about. Because a lot of our time is spent thinking about sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, how much we'd like them to be nice, and what kind of nice ways we would like to experience them. And that kind of pleasure, I mean, that thinking about that does give a certain amount of pleasure, but it's a, a pleasure with a lot of heat to it. In other words, if you just think, think, think about these things and don't get them, then there's a sense of lack, a sense that you're missing out on something in life. And so the Buddha says those kinds of thoughts don't really help you. What you need is a kind of happiness that's higher than the sensory stuff. That's why we focus on the breath, get the sense of the breath energy in the body. This is the happiness of form. And the ability to get your mind still like this creates a kind of happiness that doesn't depend on things being the way you want them outside at all, which means that you're more independent and you're not tied down by things. There's that famous story of the monk who would go off and sit under a tree. He had been a king before he was a monk. And he would sit under a tree and he would say, what bliss, what bliss. And the other monks were concerned that he was thinking about his happiness back when he was king. So they told the Buddha. The Buddha called the monk to see him and asked him, why is this? You say, what bliss, what bliss. And the monk says that back when I was king, and even though I had all the pleasures a king might want, still I would sleep at night having to have guards all around me in the palace, outside the palace, in the city, outside the city, in the countryside, on the edge of the countryside. And even then he would be scared that someone would come trying to come and get him. But now that he's a monk, he sits under a tree and has no fear from any quarter. His mind is like he says, free like a wild deer. And that's why he says, what bliss. That's the kind of freedom, that's the kind of well-being that comes when you're not concerned about having things just a certain way, having the house just a certain way, having your situation around you just a certain way, being with the right people, all that kind of stuff. That kind of happiness is a, is a happiness that grates on you. It inflames the mind. In other words, it doesn't give any real peace. And the question is, can you know real peace if that's where your concerns are? Wanting things to be just this way, wanting the sight to be just that way, that sound, that touch, this smell, this taste. There's no real peace there at all. So when the Buddha has you turn your mind away from these things, it's not because he wants to deprive you of happiness, it's because it's there's a better happiness. In other words, you're not being deprived, you're making a wise trade. You're trading candy for gold, something that's a much greater value. So learn how to pull your mind out of its concern with sensual things. I mean, this is one of, one of the perfections, the perfection of renunciation. Renunciation sounds like you're being in prison, but it's not. It's, it's you're learning how to make a wise trade. So try to keep that in mind as you focus on the breath. And any other pleasures that come up having to do with sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, those are a lower kind of pleasure and they're very temporary. And they inflame the mind. In other words, they don't really do you any good at all. The real good comes from training the mind to be at peace inside, here with the breath, here with the body in the present moment as you feel it from within. That's where your true happiness is going to be found.